Hernia Part 2 Conjunctal umbilical hernia Definition Protrusion of a viscous or part of it through congenital defect in the abdominal wall Incidence Midline abdominal wall defect noted in one in each 5,000 live birth associated abnormalities occur in 30 to 70 percentage of infants and include chromosomal abnormalities and congenital heart diseases. Facial defects less than 1 cm in diameter close spontaneously by 5 years of age in 95 percentage of cases. When the facial defect is greater than 1.5 cm in diameter, it seldomly closes spontaneously. Indications for surgical repair of umbilical defect. The intestine becomes incarcerated. Facial defect is more than 1.5 cm. Old children older than 4 years of age. Exophthalmus minor and exophthalmus major. A comparison. Defect in minor is small, less than 5 cm at the umbilicus central cord. Exophthalmus major is large, more than 5 cm in the center of the abdominal wall, usually supraumbilical eccentric cord. The sac in exophthalmus minor is small, peritoneum, while in major it's large, peritoneum. Coverings For the minor, layer of Wharton's jelly and a layer of amniotic membrane. The content is usually intestine or Meckel's diverticulum. While in major, coverings are only one layer of amniotic membrane, while the content may include many viscera and occasionally a part of the liver. Complications of exophthalmus minor during ligation of the umbilical cord, loop of intestine may become entangled in the ligature accidentally. So, resection for umbilical enteric fistula. Complications for the major, the sac and the coverings may rupture, leading to infection and peritonitis, which is the cause of this. Treatment. For minor, the contents are reduced and returned to the abdomen, the sac is excised, the defect is repaired in layers. While in major, by urgent operation, usually there is no room in the abdomen to accommodate the contents. If the sac is intact, the defect is closed by a thensetic mesh. Or orogastric tube should be placed on suction to minimize intestinal distension. If the sac has ruptured, skin flaps are used. The skin on either side of the defect is undermined, creating skin flaps, which are brought together over the sac and sutured. Release incisions in the flanks are needed. After several months, the peritoneum and muscles can be approximated and closed in layers. If the viscera are reduced, but the abdominal wall closure is not impossible, but there are two options, stage repair or prosthetic patch repair. The stage repair aims to create a protective extra-abdominal extension of the peritoneal cavity, is termed a silo or silo, S-I-L-O, allowing gradual reduction of the viscera and gradual abdominal wall expansion using two parallel sheets of reinforced silastic sheeting sutured to the facial edges or a preformed one-piece silo with a collapsible ring at its base for ease of insertion. A prosthetic patch repair, it bridges the facial gap with a synthetic material, for example, polytetraflux fluoroethylene, and the skin is closed over the patch. With severe associated anomalies or a giant omphalocele, the amnion is allowed to dry and form an eschar. The membrane becomes vascularized beneath the eschar, and contraction of the wound with skin gross covers the defect. A ventral hernia results, which is repaired electively when the patient is stable. Infantile umbilical hernia etiology, weakness of the umbilical scar from infection of the umbilical cord stump, increased intra-abdominal pressure from coughing or abdominal distension, clinical picture, painless swelling unless it's complicated exactly at the umbilicus, and obstruction and strangulation are rare below the age of 3 years. Pathology, defect, exactly at the umbilicus, sac, peritoneum, contents, omentum, bowel, or both. The coverings, extra peritoneal fat and umbilical scar and skin. The neck of the sac is wide and the edge of the defect palpated as a firm ring. Treatment. Reassurance of the parents and follow-up are the usual measures. The defect closes spontaneously within two years in most of the cases. Correction of the cause of straining if present. Indications for operation. The defect is more than two fingers wide when the hernia persists after the age of two years. Technique. A semicircular incision is done below the umbilicus. A skin flap is turned upwards, the sac is transfixed and excised, the defect in linea alba is closed with few stitches of non-observable suture material as polypropylene or proline. Adult umbilical hernia or para-umbilical hernia. Incidents more frequent in middle-aged females, especially in obese multiparous women. Pathology, defect, 
A defect lies in the linea alba situated above the umbilicus because the linea alba is thinner and broader due to stretch by stomach. Occasionally, the defect is below the umbilicus. It's never lateral to it because of the rectus abdominis muscle. The umbilical scar lies below the swelling. It's compressed by the hernia and it looks like a crescent. The sac, it has a narrow neck with a small defect in the linea alba. Adhesions inside the sac are very common, especially at the fundus, rendering the hernia irreducible. Clinical picture, there is a painless swelling above the umbilicus which gives an expansile impulse on cuff. Mild dragging pain may be present in a huge hernia. Paraumbilical hernias are frequently found to be irreducible or partially reducible. Complications as strangulation and irreducibility are very common due to narrow neck, sharp edge, and adhesions inside the sac. Strangulation presents with severe acute pain. A truss is not satisfactory because the hernia is usually irreducible and its use carries a high risk of strangulation. The previous maze repair is not commonly performed nowadays. Treatment. Surgery is the only method of treatment. Treatment of predisposing factors prior to surgery, for example, reduction of weight is advised for the obese. Technique. An elliptical transverse incision is made over the maximum convexity of the hernia. Skin flaps are undermined upwards and downwards. The sac is exposed and sected down the neck. The sac is opened at its neck because adhesions are usually present at the fundus. The contents are reduced into the abdomen. The sac is excised at the neck. The defect is then repaired. If the defect is small, closed by non-absorbable suture. If the defect is large or the musculoapneurotic layer is weak, a proline mesh is used to close the defect. Epigastric hernia, definition, protrusion of the extra abdominal, I'm sorry, extra peritoneal fat through a defect in the supraumbilical part of the linea alba, and it's called fatty hernia of linea alba. As the protrusion enlarges, the fat pulls through the defect a small peritoneal pouch which may contain intestine or omentum, and it's called epigastric hernia. If there's pain, the surgeon should be sure that it's not due to an underlying disease such as peptic ulcer or gallstones. Clinical picture, symptoms, it may be symptomless and it may cause local pain and it may cause dyspepsia due to traction on the stomach. Signs, swelling in the epigastrium which is soft and frequently irreducible, giving expansile impulse on cuff and occasionally there are multiple hernias. Treatment, treatment of predisposing factors first. Operation is performed by excision of the protruding extraperitoneal fat and the hernia sac, followed by simple closure of the linea alba defect. If the defect is large, a proline mesh hernioplasty is performed. Divarication of recti or diastasis recti. Definition, there is separation of the recti due to stretching of the linea alba by a chronically raised intra-abdominal pressure. Clinical picture, type of the patient, middle-aged females due to repeated pregnancies, in patients who have ascites or splenomegaly. When the abdomen is relaxed, nothing is visible, but on raising the shoulders, the linea alba bulges as a longitudinal ridge and the fingers can be dipped into the abdomen between the two recti. Treatment, abdominal belt is satisfactory in most cases. Surgical repair is likely to fail until the cause of high intra-abdominal pressure is treated. Incisional hernia, definition, hernia which develops at the site of a previous abdominal incision. Etiology, preoperative, obesity, factors which cause poor healing such as malnutrition, cirrhosis, diabetes, jaundice, corticosteroid intake, patients with respiratory problems such as chronic bronchitis, bronchial asthma, chronic obstructive lung diseases, the nature of the primary disease for which the operation was performed such as patients with abdominal malignancy are usually malnourished or patients with peritonitis will have abdominal distension and wound sepsis. Operative, Muscle cutting incisions are more liable to burst than muscle splitting ones. Vertical incisions have higher incidence of burst than transverse ones. Rough surgical technique with excessive trauma to the muscles, blood vessels, and nerves. Use of absorbable sutures in the closure of the aponeurotic layer of an abdominal wound. Good bites should be taken on either side by non-absorbable sutures as polypropylene. Insertion of drainage tubes through the main wound. Post-operative. Surgical site infection, it's the most important factor. The tissues become friable due to collagen lysis, allowing the sutures to cut through them. Poor recovery from anesthesia, leading to strong coughing. Persistent increase in intra-abdominal pressure due to repeated coughing, vomiting, hiccough, or abdominal distension. Hematoma of the wound. Recurrent hernia, etiology, same causes as incisional hernia. 
and there are specific causes. Specific causes are leaving a part of the original sac, failure to ligate the sac at the proper neck, or missing of a direct hernia sac which was present in addition to the oblique one, failure to do the proper repair, such as doing a bacinus repair in a patient with a weak conjoint tendon or doing the repair under tension, treatment for recurrent hernia, correction of any predisposing factors, Truss may be applied until the patient is fit for surgery. Hernioplasty by a synthetic mesh is usually performed. In most of the patients with a recurrence, after a repair of an oblique inguinal hernia, the recurrence will be in the medial end of the repair and will present as direct inguinal hernia. Treatment for incisional hernia, surgery offers only the definitive cure. Many operations are available, but it's to be stressed that any repair under tension is doomed to failure. Usually the defect is white and patients need a mesh hernioplasty operation. If the patient is unfit for surgery and provided the hernia is reducible, an abdominal binder will keep the hernia reduced. Burst abdomen Definition Complete disruption of an abdominal incision in the early post-operative period. Etiology Same as incisional and recurrent hernia. Types Partial and complete. Partial The deep layers burst but the skin is intact, producing incisional hernia. Complete, if the intestine prolapses out of the wound, it's called evisceration. But if the intestine is retained inside the abdomen, it's called dehiscence. Clinical picture usually occurs on the 6th to the 8th day postoperatively. Serosanguinous discharge, soaking the dressing, the warning sign to the occurrence of a burst, and it's called the red sign. It's due to strangulation of a piece of momentum or loop of bowel which is prolapsed through a defect in the muscles. The patient often feels as if something gives away. Symptoms of intestinal obstruction may be present. Burst abdomen, incisional hernia, recurrent hernia, they have common etiological factors, which are the preoperative, operative, and postoperative causes. Treatment, by urgent surgical closure, preoperative, cover the prolapsed bowel by steroid dressing, insert nasogastric tube and start IV infusion, operative, under general anesthesia, the, the protruding loops of the bowel are washed with saline and returned to the abdominal cavity. The omentum is spread over the intestine. The abdominal wall is closed as one layer by a through and through sutures using strong, non absorbable suture materials such as polypropylene called retention sutures, and they are retained for at least three weeks. Care should be taken not to puncture a loop of the bowel. Post operative antibiotics. Abdominal binder is recommended as well. Diseases of the umbilicus. Umbilical fistula, umbilical sinus, umbilical stone, polyp, granuloma, umbilical hernia, and tumors of the umbilicus. Umbilical fistula, congenital, from a patent vit uh, vitello-intestinal duct. Traumatic, inflammatory, from TB of the small intestine. Malignant, from carcinoma of the transverse colon ulcerating through the umbilicus. Urinary fistula, if the weather, congenital from patent urachus or rarely acquired. Biliary fistula is very rare and may due to operative bile duct injury during cholecystectomy. Umbilical sinus discharges pus and it's due to either an abdominal wall abscess or umbilical infection. Pilonadal sinus of the umbilicus is rare but it leads to persistent discharge. Umbilical stone, it may form due to chronic inflammation of umbilicus or from umbilical granuloma. The stone should be removed and the granuloma is excised by diathermy and antiseptics are applied. Umbilical polyp, it's due to persistence of the umbilical extremity of the vitello-intestinal duct, which become everted outwards. The epithelial surface undergoes initiative hyperplasia from friction, leading to formation of a polypoid mass at the bottom of the umbilicus. It should be excised. Umbilical granuloma, there is a mass of granulation tissue due to chronic infection of the umbilical scar and it should be corrected and then cauterized by silver nitrate. Then umbilical hernia and finally tumors of the umbilical squamous cell carcinoma and secondary carcinoma. Squamous cell carcinoma is rare and it gives metastasis to axillary and inguinal lymph nodes on both sides. Secondary carcinoma nodules may be present at the umbilicus due to spread from carcinoma of the stomach pancreas, liver, or breast. Dysmoid tumor or Paget's tumor or fibroma of the rectus sheath. Pathology, the nature is exactly unknown. It's considered as a locally malignant fibrosarcoma. It arises from the anterior rectus sheath, more common, the posterior rectus sheath, 
from the anterior abdominal wall muscles, it may occur on top of scars or incisions. Instance, it may be associated with intestinal polyposis, Gardner's syndrome. Gross appearance, non-encapsulated, slowly growing swelling which infiltrates the surrounding structures, cut section, pinkish white. Microscopically, it formed of cellular fibrous tissue. Clinical picture, type of the patient, it usually affects females, about the age of 40 years. Symptoms, painless, hard, ill-defined, slowly growing mass of the abdominal wall with nodular surface. Treatment, by excision with a safety margin of at least one inch, reconstruction of the defect by flaps of fascia or synthetic mesh. Recurrence is very common if the tumor is not adequately excised. Hematoma of the rectus sheath, cause, this is usually due to trauma, causing rupture of the inferior epigastric vessels. Clinical picture, there is pain, tenderness, and swelling over the rectus muscle. Treatment, if the hematoma is large, evacuation of the hematoma and ligation of the epigastric vessels. Minimal access surgery, many operations can now be performed whether by natural body orifices using fibro-optic endoscopy or through fine stabs which are used to introduce rigid endoscopes into the peritoneum, pleura, and joint cavities. Gas in the peritoneal cavity makes a space between anterior abdominal wall and the viscera, so it allows visualization of organs and manipulation of instruments. Laparoscopy, steps, general anesthesia, insufflation of peritoneal cavity with carbon dioxide using a burst needle, retrieves the possibility of puncturing viscera during an uh, introduction, a trucker and cannula are inserted at the umbilicus. That trucker is removed and the cannula or port is used to introduce the telescope. This telescope is connected to a video camera which displays its image on a monitor and allows the surgeon and assistants to see the interior of the abdominal cavity. Inspection of the peritoneal cavity. Other ports are inserted under direct vision through the abdominal wall to allow the introduction of instruments for the section, coagulation, retraction and cutting advantages. Minimal post-operative pain, minimal impairment of pulmonary functions, fast recovery and early return to normal activities, the ability to visualize and explore the whole abdominal and pelvic organs, video recording of the operative procedures with obvious educational advantages, better appearance and decreased wound problems as dehiscence or infection, drawbacks, the need for well-trained surgeons, high cost of the equipment and post-operative shoulder pain, which is caused by irritation and stretching of the diaphragm by the carbon dioxide. Diagnostic laparoscopy is rapidly gaining popularity in certain situations. Determination of the cause of acute lower abdominal pain, such as acute pelvic appendicitis or torsion of an ovarian cyst. Determination of the extent of malignant disease, such as small liver secondaries or peritoneal nodules. In blunt abdominal trauma, to detect the exact injuries, Frequently performed laparoscopic operations such as cholecystectomy, appendectomy, and inguinal hernia repair, bariatric surgery, fundoplication of gastroesophageal reflux, GERD, gynecological operations such as tubal ligation and tubal adhesolysis. Conversion of laparoscopic surgery into conventional open surgery is indicated in the following situations considering that the safety of the patient is the absolute priority, such as equipment failure, dense adhesions or anatomical abnormalities precluding safe performance of the procedure, uncontrolled bleeding, accidental injuries requiring open repair, diagnostic laparoscopy if only performed in stable patients. And this concludes hernia.